Hey guys, Mono here and welcome back to the channel. We have an awesome motorcycle in the shop today. A motorcycle that you don't see often these days. A classic enduro bike that is considered by some a wet dream on two wheels. This is a Honda XR400 Motard. Yes, a factory built supermoto by Honda. A bike that not a lot of people knew existed and it just so happens we got one right here. Stick around because this is a good one. Now the Honda XR400 is an absolute legend in the dual sport world. Introduced in the late 90s, this beast is powered by a 397cc air-cooled 4-valve four 4-stroke four kickstart only engine that's built for pure performance. It's got the muscle to tackle any terrain from gnarly off-road trails to smooth highway stretches with power and precision. It looks and handles like its 250cc sibling, but rips like its older brother, the legendary XR600R. This bike isn't just reliable, it's practically indestructible. Riders love it for its easy maintenance and bulletproof design. Whether you're hitting the trails hard or cruising on weekend adventures, the XR400 is your go-to machine for epic rides. It's not just a motorcycle, it's a symbol of rugged freedom and unyielding spirit. Now, despite its reputation in the dual sport community and cult-like following, the XR400 was, sadly, discontinued in 2004. Reason was to make way for Honda's newer, faster, but sadly, more maintenance-intensive CRF450. Well, basically, that is the end of the story of the XR400, at least in North America. In other parts of the world though, the XR400 continued on for another 2 or 3 years. The one that we have here is a Japanese domestic model, 2006 XR400 Motard. Again, this is a factory built supermoto from Honda, not some home garage assembled unit. This is equipped with parts that a lot of XR owners in the North American region wish they had on theirs like the motocross style rear fender and gas tank shrouds that mimic the CRF450 back in the day, a pair of fully adjustable upside down forks, and a rear monoshock that is also fully adjustable, 17 inch supermoto wheels, and the best part is it comes with electric start. Now before I proceed in showing you what we did to this bike, let's have a look at what supermoto bikes the Japanese got for themselves back in the day. And it just so happens, I've had this book for a really long time. This book features all the cool bikes that they had during that time. Here we have the Kawasaki KLX D-Tracker X, another factory built supermoto based heavily on the KLX 250. Another supermoto wet dream from Yamaha, the WR250X Special. As you can see, it looks fancy with its alloy wheels. Next would be the XR250 Motard, which is basically the smaller version of the 400 that we have here. And lastly, they have a Yamaha XT250X Motard, which is basically the XT250 Serao with 17-inch wheels. Now, despite the fact that this book is in Japanese, the best part is it's easy to understand with all the numbers and uh, details comparing the different bikes available during that time. And it has this comparison between the ever so popular and still available Suzuki DRZ 400 SM, a bike which I featured before, by the way, and the XR 400 Motard that we have at the shop right now. Now check out how the XR stacks up against the DRZ. Look at the power output difference. Now for those who have XR 400s in the past or have experienced one before, you know for a fact that this is not how the XR performs, well at least on paper. If we compare this model XR to the one that we know more of, which is the Enduro Kickstart only version, or should I say the North American version, this one is a watered down version of that.
So what did we do to this bike? Well, our customer who recently acquired this asked us to do a couple of things. One, we changed the stock 17-inch front wheel for a more adventure-oriented 19-inch wheel with off-road tires. Second would be to get him a set of custom decals. These are made by my friend, by the way. Third was to address the lack of engine performance. We installed this larger carburetor that our customer supplied to make his bike faster since the stock carb delivered underwhelming performance and was cutting off a lot. Lastly, we installed a larger rear sprocket and brand new chain to make this bike accelerate even faster. We replaced the stock 38 tooth with a much larger 48 tooth rear sprocket and paired it with the 15 tooth engine sprocket this bike came with. XR400 Motard was a good bike, although it was underpowered as you can see there in the comparison or the charts that I just showed you from the magazine. Uh, it is underwhelming, you know, comparing it to the DRZ, but I believe there is a reason why Honda did this. It was for emissions. It was, well, the XR400 has an air-cooled engine, which is more, well, less compliant to more modern uh, emission standards. So I believe that's the reason why uh, it was detuned. Well, that's all I have for you today. What can you say about the XR400? And if you happen to have this particular model, tell us about your experience. Now, my only wish is that Honda brings back this unicorn. I'm pretty sure a lot of people will find this bike an awesome choice, despite it being considered underpowered by the media and some of the reviews that can be addressed with aftermarket parts, by the way. Uh, this would be a perfect choice for commuting or extended adventures over various terrains. Now, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy what I do here. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.